It's Toronto's podcast on the Canada's Podcast Network. Today, I'd like to introduce to you Lauren Smith. In 2013, Lauren founded Two Social, uh, a, a, a social agency. Um, and in 2017, only four years later, Two Social opened its second office in Santa Monica, California. Today, Lauren divides her time between Toronto and Los Angeles and is fueled by an insatiable drive for success and coffee, apparently, a lot of coffee. Lauren, welcome to Canada's Podcasts. So, Lauren, welcome uh, to Canada's Podcasts. And, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do, you know, where you are today kind of thing. Great, and thank you for having me. I'm excited to be uh, having this conversation with you today. So a little bit about myself. Um, I'm the CEO and founder of a company called Two Social, Mm -hmm. and we're a digital creative agency. We were founded in 2013, and at that time, when we started, we were predominantly a social media shop, super exciting, emerging new business, and we really had the ambition to support local businesses, and then it sort of grew from there that we're working also with national brands and over almost seven years now we've evolved to having a secondary office in LA to support our growing US market and US roster of clients Mm -hmm. and we've evolved also our team and our services to be more of a well-rounded digital and creative agency to support our clients in in, you know all the scale of their projects. So I mean uh... Why did you become an entrepreneur? I mean, are we wired differently? You know, you could do you could do tons of things. What made you become an entrepreneur? Well, it's always really been a passion of mine to um, live this sort of unpredictable, curated life. Um, working along things that I feel really passionate about. Um, I don't know if that means that it's, you know, are you wired that way? I'm not sure. I think that I am. Um, It's always, even since I was a young kid, I was, you know, putting together a babysitting uh, sort of club (laughs) organization and and running that. And I was, you know, then I was a personal trainer. I went to school originally for fitness and health. And I also, I worked at a gym, of course, but I also had my side business where I would train people privately in their homes. And then from there I was a freelance writer after going back to school for fashion marketing and Mm -hmm. then I moved and lived abroad and I was working as a freelance writer and I really just had the ambition to help support um, local businesses and grow my own business and kind of see where it would go from there. Okay I mean do you really I mean the wiring thing you know you you know lots of entrepreneurs Uh, are we wired differently or or, I mean, I, I keep asking everyone that. I, I, I'm just curious. I, I, well, I think know. you have to be slightly more different to be able to live kind of in a world that can be sometimes unpredictable. You have mm-hmm. to have a thick skin. You have to be willing to take rejection gracefully and rise above it. So. Mm-hmm. I believe to that degree, you have to be wired differently. Um, I'm not sure that a lot of those traits can be learned or taught, but um, yeah, perhaps. I, 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 you know, I come from both a mix of a family of both entrepreneurs and business owners, as well as people that uh, were really passionate about the jobs and the people that they worked for. So um, it's, it's certainly not for everybody. I think that I just always had it in my mind to build something and be involved in something that I created and seeing it through. Now you, you've recently opened in, in LA. Um, yeah. And, but you know, this is Canada's podcast. So I, I mean, but I'm going to ask you the awkward question, you know, what are the benefits of doing business in Toronto, Canada, rather than building a big empire or big office? And becoming U.S. based, if you like. Well, the nice thing about working in Toronto, besides that it's home, love mm-hmm. it, um, mm-hmm. is really your. I feel that our services allow for us to partner with clients, help them grow their business. So if I'm able to help a business thrive within my community and within within Canada, then it's such a great accomplishment. It feels like a contribution as well to the community. So I think for me, that would be the biggest benefit of having a a Toronto-based business. You know, why would you recommend Toronto to others? I mean, you know, 
we've got people listening to this yeah. across Canada. Actually, you know, about 30% of our audience is, is, is from states as well. Mm -hmm. um, so why Toronto versus LA versus San Francisco versus Boston, whatever? Uh, I'm biased. Toronto's home, as I mentioned, but um, I like the vibrancy of a city. I'm inspired by the energy of a city. I'm inspired by the people and the multiculturalism of the city. And so for me, having a business in sort of a hub like Toronto, it just allows for me to continue being motivated and, and sort of rise above any obstacles. And, and it just gives me that fire I need to continue and, and the bustle I need in the energetic days that follow the entrepreneur life. So that's why. I think there's great communities and opportunities in all sorts of different markets. So mm -hmm. it really depends on the type of business and, and really the lifestyle you're trying to curate for yourself. Okay. So, you know, you're an ideas person, both in your business and, and, and in, for others as well. Um, and we get ideas when we least expect them. You know, how do you disconnect? How do you recharge? How do yeah. you get inspired? I mean, I know you drink a lot of coffee. It says that. In one of your, I, I, I said that. I said that at the beginning. But you know, there is a coffee. <laughs> so how do you, you know, how do you get inspired? Well, I have, that was a learning curve for me over the seven years of having two social and many years previous being entrepreneur is finding what works for me to disconnect. And I really believe it's different for each person. Um, but inspiration and creativity is super important. So personally, what I do, I found yoga was a really great escape for me. I like long drives and um, on stressful days, I have to take a walk. So that walk could be a quiet walk that uh, along the beautiful uh, lakes, lakeshore, mm -hmm. or it's, you know, I'm listening to an inspiring podcast or I'm listening to some music to recharge me, depending on the mood. At Two Social, we have Monday mod uh, meditation. Mm -hmm. So we have um, the quiet company come in. It's another organization and they come in and they walk us through guided meditations, um, focused specifically on stimulating creativity within the workplace. So we're always exploring ways that we can also support our team members and how they can disconnect. And it's really, truly going to be different for each person. Sometimes it's fitness and sometimes it's long walks. You know, so lots of future entrepreneurs listen to, to mm. this. Um, what's the, what would you say, what's your best thing about being an entrepreneur? Well, I love that every single day is a little bit different. I'm also, our nature of our business is in an ever-changing environment. So how we started out in 2013 is vastly different than where we are today. And I quite like that. I like how I have to be nimble and agile with my business plan. I have to be willing to pivot and move and change. And so mm -hmm. that, but that's also um, the nature of my personality. So I think that, um, you know, that was, that's my favorite part is every day can be different and you can I love also that I'm able to curate the environment with team members that continually inspire me and encourage me to continue so um, that's been really an awesome part and I get to work with fantastic clients so they inspire me also what are you most excited about in your business these days I mean what's what's really making making you go wow in, 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 in the, the social side of things well, specifically to social media, I mean, it's the ongoing changes to the various platforms and new mm -hmm. offerings like TikTok. You mm -hmm. know, a lot of people, a lot of, especially in the U.S. market, uh, a lot of clients asking us, you know, what is TikTok? How does it work? And just kind of exploring these new offerings. Again, it's sort of how my business has to pivot and change and be agile. So um, that's always exciting, the new trends coming up each year and how we're going to approach business or social strategies for each of our clients. And just are the client sectors and the different pillars of business we provide services for you know where it was used it was a lot of food and beauty at one time and now we're also working with a lot of cbd and cannabis brands so just right. seeing how that landscape and the nature yeah. of the business reaching out to us for our services and our support that's okay. been really interesting okay. to watch. so you know you, you've been doing it for six or seven years now what's the next five years where do you see yourself in the next five years? 
We're going to continue um, adding great partnerships to our business and really round out our service offerings for our clients to continue growing and scaling to the size of their, or the nature of what their needs are for to reach and exceed their business objectives. So that may, you know, recently this past year, we've added events um, in real life events, activations and PR as part of our offerings here at Two Social. So mm -hmm. continuing to grow as well as focusing on expansion through more cities outside of just Toronto and LA, um, continuing to work with fantastic clients that we really feel passionate about the nature of their businesses. And you know, it's always about doing great work. So mm -hmm. um, curating and continuing to curate a fantastic team of professionals and then delivering work that really impresses our clients. You know, if there was something in the industry, I mean, we, we both live in, you know, a marketing business, uh, something that's just a fad right now, you know, what should people kind of not do in your business? It's a big changing business. We both know mm -hmm. that. Okay, um, probably lots of things, but I'll, <laughs> say, I'll just say, um, I tell a lot of clients that they get really excited about new things. As I mentioned, TikTok being an example, or yeah, yeah. you know, they want to be on every single social media platform and doing all these different types of media, such as video and, and graphic design and all these things. And I, I, my best advice is to really understand where your customers lie, where your consumers live, where they engage, what platform makes the most amount of sense for your business mm -hmm. and put all your eggs into that basket okay. and do it really, really well before you start to, start to scale and try and be on everything and try and be everything for everybody, really have a clear path. And so what we've done at Two Social is we really put a lot of focus in our strategy that we develop for our clients before even touching their social platforms. What are the top three things in your bucket list, vision board, whatever the heck you call it at the moment? Personally or business? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Mm, I want to learn a language. I think it's important to be learning and challenging yourself. And that's one thing that I haven't mastered that's on my list of to-dos. Um, I'm inspired by travel. So finding new opportunities and adventures around the globe and experiencing culture and trying to fit that into my really mm -hmm. good uh, lifestyle. That's another one. And um Hmm, that third one, I'm not quite sure. That's okay. That's okay. I, I, continuing to figure out ways to progress my wellness or health journey and adding okay. that into my everyday okay. life, finding that balance. That was a challenge. Well, you know, what's the greatest challenge you've faced in, in the last seven years? You know, I think the challenges are great for people to hear, uh, and more importantly, how you overcome it. Um, yeah. So, so what, what would you, what would you kind of, narrow down into the greatest challenge? Well, I would say the biggest challenge really has to be uh, when it's when it's your business, I feel, at least for myself, you get very, very connected and you take things really personally and it's your baby and you feel mm -hmm. everybody should be just as motivated and, and into it and excited as you are. And I think that it's important to not be so emotional and to learn how to separate that part of your, yourself with your business mm -hmm. and um, just bounce back. You know, yeah, I no, always right. My dad always had a really great quote, say, oh, and let it go. And he really usually meant if I fell off my bike, cry for a sec and then move on. But that relates to business. Also, you have to have a bit of a thick skin. You have to have a really short memory and you have to be resilient. And that's been, honestly, it likely still is something that I'm learning throughout mm -hmm. uh, this journey. Yeah, so let's kind of move into some, the, some of the lessons that you can, some things, lessons learned that people can learn from you, basically. And we, we started that, you know, what you know based what you know now you know uh what do you wish you hadn't done and would advise people not to do um i would advise people to especially when you're looking to partner and have a partner as part of your business to mm -hmm. take the time to understand if it's the right fit for you and if they can support you in areas that perhaps you're not as strong in and taking mm -hmm. the time to understand and cultivate that relationship that's really important not to rush into that was a great lesson um i think also um 
taking the time to find the right team members, not just the level of experience, but also to see if they fit your values and the culture you're trying to cultivate in, in your work, mm -hmm. because that's, that's really important uh, okay. moving forward. So if you could go, go back in time, mm -hmm. what advice would you give your 20 year old self? Oh, um, hire people better than you hire people and you cannot do everything yourself. So hire people that can best support you um, and help you reach the goals that you hope for your business. Mm -hmm. That would be the best advice I'd give myself. It'll help everything scale a little bit faster. What's the best piece of advice that you've been given that, that you've, you know, that you've taken to heart and applied, if you like? Um, so many, I have a group of people I call my brother. So, I mean, as I mentioned before, say, oh, and let it go was a really great quote because it's so simple, but it just reminds you to be resilient and not give up. And it's really yeah. just that, that, you know, phrase you always hear is just don't give up. It's so, so true because there's always going to be really tough days. You as a leader have to come into your office your, or your environment and mm -hmm. hope to inspire and raise the sentiment in your office every single day. So you've got to leave your personal behind, sort of separate church mm -hmm. and dates. Mm -hmm. And so that's probably the best advice I can. Okay. So, so I'm just going to move into some rapid fire questions. So oh. they, you know, so don't think too much, just poop, okay. you know, okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> if you weren't doing what you do now, yes. what would you be doing instead? I'd probably be a life coach. Life coach, okay. What books are you currently reading or listening to or whatever? And what would you recommend to our audience? I'm currently reading Born to Lead by Brene Brown and Talking mm -hmm. to Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell. Both really cool books, both very different. Yeah. Uh, for Entrepreneurs, a really cool book that I liked because I thought it was super current in, in talking about social media and digital was Crushing It by Gary Vee. Also mm -hmm. really like his podcast. Also really like yours. Thank you. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, of course, Tim Ferriss is yeah. always Yeah, awesome. absolutely. Okay. Are you a morning or a night person? A morning person. What time does day start? A little bit before seven. Yeah, okay. If you had to pick one word to describe yourself, what would it be and why? You can pick two words if you want. Okay. Um, energetic. Okay. They call me the energizer bunny here, so I'm gonna <laughs> take it from that. So energetic might be because of coffee and um, authentic. Okay, those are, those are good words. Those are good, good words. What's keeping you up at night? If anything, maybe nothing's keeping you up at night. Oh, no, things keep me up. I would say uh, what keeps me up is I create a goal list every single year of things I have to get accomplished in that year. And now it's, it's, yeah. now it's November. So mm -hmm. it, that's what's keeping me up right now. I have a few on my list I have to get done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you love to travel. What's your favorite place in the world? Italy, anywhere in Italy. Anywhere in Italy? Okay. Yeah, got me okay. anywhere and I'm with a plate of pasta and I'm good. Yeah, I'm, I'm France, <laughs> but that's okay. That's I've, I've said that before. So. <laughs> what are the three non-negotiables that have to happen in your routine? You know, a morning routine, evening routine. Mm -hmm. uh, you sound like a morning routine person. Like yeah, non-negotiables, definitely a coffee. Mm -hmm. Second would be a phone call with a loved one. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important. Keeps you centered. Mm -hmm. And third, um, I like to call it the time that I sit for a sec, meaning a couple minutes for yourself. That could be a lie down, that could be a walk, that could be a workout, whatever it is, but a moment to yourself, not work related. Five minutes, 10 minutes, an hour, it doesn't matter. Yeah, with me, it's my, my, my stop and think is yeah. the beginning of the day. And I take usually about 30 minutes just to uninterrupted stopping and thinking. No. Good. So it's good. No. Call it meditation. I don't like to call it meditation. That's way too whatever. It's the sit for a sec. <laughs> <laughs> and we're coming to the end. And the end is, you know, uh, there's a small tropical island, which you would love, in the middle of the ocean with only one phone booth, no internet. We drop you off there. There's no technology at all. You know, how long would you last? And what would you do before you called us? 
Well, Philip, there's so many variables. Is there tsunamis coming? Is there food available to me? Um, I don't know. <laughs> you know? Um, so I, I, I like alone time. So I would probably last at least a couple of days. I think I'd be okay. Um, yeah. I don't know if I can build a fire. So all of those survivor aspects, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, a couple of days, no problem on my own. And then to make that phone call, I'd probably call my mother. Okay, that's good. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Okay. Um, thank you, Lauren. That was a really, you know. Thank you. That was a that really was fast cool. 30 minutes. I can, I can tell you it's, it's been, been a lot of fun. How, you know, if someone's got some questions, how can listeners get a hold of you? Yes, for sure. And I mean, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. Mm -hmm. I love what you're doing and inspired by your podcasts. If people would like to learn more about Two Social, um, feel free to check out our website, twosocialagency.com or following us on Instagram um, and myself on Instagram as well. It's at Lauren Maria S. Okay. Okay, Thanks. Lauren. Thanks for coming on the Canada's podcast.